the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! How do I know my life is going down spiritually? How do I know I need help? How do I know that God is calling me to a greater spiritual experience? Number one, first vital sign that points to spiritual retrogression. When there is a significant deviation from your love for God and your love for the things of God. Write it down, please. A significant deviation from your love for God your love for the things of God that the passion that was once in your heart the drive for Jesus your love for Jesus your love for the things of God when you find out that it's it, it's getting cold going down that is a sign a vital sign pointing to the fact that you are retrogressing spiritually hallelujah when you read the letter that was sent in Revelation to the seven churches. One of the churches had a call that they were neither hot nor cold. And he told them to return back to their first love. Significant deviation from your love for Jesus. Please look up. There are many of us here, if we are to be honest tonight, you will agree with me as the Spirit is convicting you that something is vitally wrong with your passion your passion for God your passion for the things of the spirit perhaps was a lot greater than it is now if that is your case then there is a cry for revival number two the second vital sign that points to spiritual retrogression is self-centered living as against Christ-centered living. Vital sign number two, self-centered living as against Christ-centered living. The moment it becomes all about you, I, me, myself, nothing about Jesus, nothing about his kingdom, nothing about his purposes, my concern is just my personal well-being whatever happens to the program of god is none of my concern vital sign number two self-centered living now as believers theologically speaking we're mandated to be delivered from two things principally number one is sin number two is self you can be free from sin but if you are not free from self you are still in bondage and you see, freedom from sin happens at the instance of your receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. But freedom from self has to do with dying daily. Are we together now? Yes. There are many people who are free from sin, but are not free from the flesh, not free from self. How do I know you are free from self? To see you high and lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy We'll see you high and lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. I know that you are Christ-centered to the degree to which your life, the entire span of your life is to see him glorified. This is the theme of your life. John said in chapter 3 and verse 30 that I may decrease, he said, that he may increase. This is the anthem of one who desires to live a Christ-centered life. Even Jesus himself said, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup from off me. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. 
Vital sign number two. When the will of God no longer becomes a concern, it is just what I want and it does not matter whether it's in sync with God's will or purpose. It doesn't matter. Provided this is what I want, it must be done. It's a sign of spiritual retrogression. Are we still together? Vital sign number three. Consistent, ever-increasing compromise of your values and godly standards. Write it down, please. The third sign that points to spiritual retrogression, consistent, ever-increasing compromise of your values and godly standards. When it no longer matters whether I walk in righteousness or not, when it no longer matters, it's my life, you say. No. The Bible says you have been bought with a price and you are God's and it says to glorify God in your body which is the Lord's. Are we together? Vital sign number three. Consistent, ever increasing compromise of your values. Listen, look up please. The way the devil attacks the believer is to attack your values because the spiritual values of the believer builds a garrison around you. Are we together? An attack on your values and godly standards is an attack on your life and i know this may not be a very popular message especially to our world today but respectfully speaking let me announce to you manchester uk and the entire globe that nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure having this seal that the lord knoweth them that are his and that everyone who names the name of christ must depart from iniquity is that in your bible the bible says but in a great house there are all kinds of vessels vessels of wood of clay of silver and of gold it says some are unto honor and some are unto dishonor here's the condition it says if a man will purge himself that man will become a vessel unto honor fit and meet for the master's use there are a group of people the bible says those whose conscience has been seared with hot iron and i'm praying for someone here tonight that in the name of Jesus, whatever has pushed you to the corridors of compromise so that you no longer have godly values. Can I tell you, a generation that loses their godly values are a generation that Satan will take advantage of. It is true. The truth remains, even for Europe, for America, for Africa, the standards of God will not change. Say amen. amen. Consistent ever increasing compromise of your values and godly standards number four vital sign number four that is a pointer to spiritual retrogression are you ready a decline in your spiritual conviction a decline in your spiritual conviction that the things you used to believe about god you no longer believe and quite honestly you do not care Hmm. a decline in your spiritual conviction a decline in your spiritual conviction we live in a world today that has programmed men to vacillate our convictions at the instance of technology respectfully speaking at the instance of education at the instance of secular enlightenment while all the aforementioned are very important i must charge you by god tonight to know that your spiritual convictions are very important here's what paul said but i know whom i have believed he said and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day back then in the seminary we were taught something called the Apostles' Creed. It was a recitation, a, a sort of a statement of faith. And we recited this every day to burn in our hearts the creed that which makes up the believer's conviction. My question tonight is what do you believe about God? Respectfully speaking, believing that God or Jesus Christ is a good man is a very good um, 
believe but that's not enough to administer salvation he is more than a good man he is more than a religious leader he is more than a kind man the bible has a lot to say about jesus number one he calls him god in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god number two the bible tells us that this word became flesh and dwelt among us the bible calls jesus the incarnate of the father are we together and that he came for the singular purpose of giving his life as a ransom for many for the bible declares that neither is there salvation in any for there is no other name given unto men under heaven by which we must be saved jesus was speaking to nicodemus in john chapter 3 and he said for god so loved the world verse 16 he says that he gave his then one and only begotten son he says that whosoever believes in him that blessing is for whosoever not just for Europeans, not just for Americans, not just for those at the Caribbean or the Middle East. Whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. There is only one name There is only one name With power to save With power to save Our God Is champion Listen, ladies and gentlemen, someday we are going to see his face, the King of kings and Lord of lords. All flesh will see him. He will not come as the baby in a manger. He will not come as the weak man who gave himself to be crucified. He's coming as the King of kings. The Lord of Lords exalted as Lord and Christ and listen to me we read all through scripture and we read through history kings were born kings became kings they grew old and they died there is not one of them that is alive they died but the Bible talks about he in Revelation that died and now came back and is alive today. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Because even for many people who profess to be Christians, they cannot articulate their convictions. What do you believe that makes you a Christian? There is a definite information you have to believe about God that makes you a Christian and this is not fanatism this is not some kind of debate to downplay we live in a society where everyone has a right to uphold whatever conviction they see fit and I respect that even while I speak but I propose to you Jesus the King of Kings the Lord of Lords I stand by the authority of scripture to declare that Jesus is truly king. He's not just the founder of a religion. Please listen, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm not here to create all kinds of arguments. You know, I, I listened last week very passionately to a great patriarch who has tonight or now joined the cloud of witnesses. And I'm sure that they are watching from heaven with joy. The man, Billy Graham. I listened to him passionately as he communicated Christ in one of his crusades very articulately and with intelligence. Listen to me. Ladies and gentlemen, it is true that there is only one God. It is true that Jesus Christ, his, his begotten son, 
was sent to the earth he came was born of the virgin called Mary it is true that he lived a sinless life while he was on earth it is true that he gave himself freely not as an act of weak of weakness he gave himself motivated by love it is true that he died on that cross at Golgotha it is true that he went to hell it is true that he defeated sin Satan hell and the grave it is also true that on the third day he arose again it is true that he's today seated at the right hand of the father if you believe everything I said then you are ready to be a bona fide recipient of that life I have seen him I have read about him in the Bible but one day I had an encounter I was in my room and he walked into my room the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and he stood before me his robe white and glistening listen if you saw the Jesus that I saw truly nothing else would matter in this life you know the song that says when all things that surrounds me become shadows in the light of you yes you see there are songs that were written they were not written to make money they were expressions of people who had an encounter with this Jesus they met him and nothing else mattered when all things that surrounds me become shadows in the light of you then you will sing songs like be lifted high be lifted high oh lord be for you are holy, righteous, and worthy. Oh Lord. Listen, there was a prophet in the Bible who even began that chapter by prophesying. Isaiah began by prophesying but the Bible says in chapter 6 and verse 1 in the year that King Uzziah died he says I Isaiah saw the Lord and Isaiah began to describe what he saw the train of his robe fills the temple that was his description and a crowd of heavenly worshippers surrounding your throne we join with them now crying holy holy is the lamb the lamb of god tonight do you see the lord i see the lord exalted i am of the people of the earth, I see the Lord. Shabala kosanaba. I see the Lord. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns Let me give you the last and we'll find somewhere to pray vital sign number five how do I know that I need a revival a personal revival five when there is a decline in your passion for the house of God a decline I just saw a wind 
and I just saw the anointing falling on a few people now. Allah I saw just like the wind just blowing. Now I'm about to pray, we'll find somewhere to pray, but this is what I'm seeing. And I'm seeing the number seven, 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 seven. There's an anointing that is coming on seven people. Listen, help them please. Help. There are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are kings, there are kings. Let me show you something the Bible has to say about the house of God. Are you ready? Psalm 122 1 verse 1. Please be seated. We'll be standing up shortly to pray. Psalm 122 verse 1. It said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Listen. The moment your passion for the house of God begins to decline, it is a sign that your spiritual life is under perpetual attack. Are we together? Community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. The Bible would speak about the early church that they met from house to house. As individuals, they encountered God, but they had a network of believers working together. Are we together? They broke bread from house to house. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, the Bible says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Are we together? And in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. The next verse, 43 now. The Bible says, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, 44. And the Bible says, the next verse please, that all they that believed were not apart. All they that believed were together, and they had all things in common. Can I tell you, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is beyond a physical institution that is you know that is is hosted in a building the church of the lord jesus christ is a spiritual entity the only entity authorized to communicate the counsel of god in the earth with precision and exactitude jesus himself the head of that church it's important you understand that the house of God and the church is very important, vitally important, even for your spiritual progress. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of God. Now, there are many of us, as I read through this list, I'm sure that the spirit of God began to convict you. Let me recap for emphasis. One, a significant deviation from your love for God and for the things of the Spirit. Number two, self-centered living as against Christ-centered living. Number three, 
consistent ever increasing compromise of your values and godly standards number four a decline in your overall spiritual conviction and finally a decline in your passion for the house of God I submit to you in the name of Jesus that anyone who is a victim of one or more or all of these aforementioned that individual is in desperate need for a revival and this is one of the reasons why the Lord sent us to host this this conference is a call to repentance tonight I know that we desire miracles and that will happen I know you desire breakthroughs you desire the prophetic but in order of priority Jesus said I am the way the way that leads to every other thing you are looking for I am the way it says no man come to the father except by me everyone who was healed in the Bible still died even those who came back from the dead still died are we together but Jesus is able to give men life beyond physical living beyond biological living he's able to quicken your spirit so that whether you are alive in the body or not you remain victorious are we together now yes it matters that you make it right with Jesus tonight listen to me it matters that you win this war of destiny once and for all there are many of us in the thousands here and thousands others following by television following online Jesus is calling you you need to encounter him you need that personal revival there are many destinies connected to you and it matters that you make it right with Jesus because someday he will come again I assure you by the authority of Scripture that Jesus will return so says the Bible and we believe it says this Jesus this same Jesus who has been taken up from among you that he will return in the exact same way so we believe and we've been called to go to all the nations and to preach this Jesus revival is not just a concept revival is an encounter with Jesus because when you encounter Jesus according to John's epistle he said this is the record that God had given us eternal life but he structured the administration of that life such that you must encounter the son to have that life you cannot have eternal life outside of Jesus eternal life is not something you sell in the mall so it does not require being wealthy eternal life is not something you pick up after a degree so it, it beyond secular education education cannot buy it I'll tell you what prepares a man to receive eternal life genuine admission and brokenness when your heart is broken before him the hymn writer says just as I am without one plea so you come to him unable to help yourself but believing that Jesus was sent as a revelation of the love of the Father sent to you sent to you sent to your nation sent to your family that whosoever believes in him even tonight can become a bona fide recipient of his life and the Bible says he that is joined to Christ is one spirit the Holy Spirit has been moving all across this place convicting men like the Bible declares that when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth speaking to the believer but to he that is not yet a believer that he will reprove the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment and I assure you by the authority of Scripture that he's in this place right now doing exactly that you are here turning lives around I worship you I worship you he is here working miracles 
Manchester, United Kingdom, and to our global family following. I'm about to make an altar call right now. There are thousands of people scattered across this auditorium, thousands others following from across the globe. Beyond the miracles you will experience tonight and all through this conference, beyond the prophetic word, by the way, we have so much in store. Do not miss any of the sessions. We are going to be prophesying across nations. I saw you holding your flags. And the devil is in trouble in this conference. In the name of Jesus Christ. But you see, when Elijah comes, Elijah does not promote himself. Elijah foreruns the path for Jesus to come. So when John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah, he said that I may decrease. Tonight it is beyond Joshua Selman. It is beyond my dear friend and brother, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. It is beyond every great man of God here represented. In fact, it is beyond Koinonia. This is Jesus making a triumphant entry in this place here and now and calling on many listen to me there are some of you who are like the prodigal son remember the story of the prodigal son the bible says he was a gentleman who came from a family that was well to do a very responsible father but because of self-centeredness he wanted his own thing and the bible says with time he plunged down in decadence until he began to feed with the swine I want you to do something the prodigal son did the Bible says he got to a point where he was utterly frustrated and this is what he said how many hired servants does my father have he says and I am here feeding with the swine he said I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven I am not worthy to be called your son it says take me as one of your servants and the Bible says he got up and he began to take that step it's interesting that the moment he began taking a step his father too began taking a step and they met somewhere at the point of his obedience and submission and the father hugged him restored the signet ring put a robe of honor and began to celebrate him there may be a prodigal son and a prodigal daughter listening to me and Jesus is telling you no matter how far you have gone Jesus is saying it doesn't matter what has happened or not happened I am here waiting as an epitome of love this is the thing about Jesus that I love he does not just love he is love and the character of love is that it forgives the character of love is that it keeps giving no wonder he gave and gave until he gave himself I want to make this call you have the right to sit back you have the right to not care like you perhaps have always done but tonight he's given you a chance here at this UK apostolic conference I truly believe with all my heart that there is a potential Billy Graham there is a potential Reinhard Bonke there is a potential Smith Wigglesworth there is a potential Emmy Semple McPherson there is a potential Catherine Kuhlman but you see the beginning of that journey is Jesus he must be Alpha and Omega he must be Alpha and Omega we prayed earnestly for your coming we prayed earnestly that you would listen to this word and as simple as it has come I'm about to make a call wherever you are from up the gallery and everywhere across this lovely auditorium and for those who are following from across the globe I'm about to make a call that you run to Jesus the way the truth and the life run to Jesus the Savior of the world run to Jesus the custodian of the life of Christ now watch this watch this I'm about to count one to five and I want you to run and come and cry before him here one he's calling you
There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Come, come to Jesus, young and old. Come to Jesus, male and female. Come, win that war. You can stand. You cannot stand for the sake of space. Come. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Surrounded by many who have crossed that river before, and this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord. Oh, let the devil be put to shame over Manchester. Let the devil be put to shame over the United Kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh, our Father, hear us from heaven, forgive us. Let's sing it one more time, everyone. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh, our Father, hear us from heaven, forgive our sin, we pray. Listen, some of you are crying. There's no reason to be ashamed. There's no reason to be afraid. You are coming to Jesus, the lover of your soul. You are coming to Jesus, the savior of your soul. The Bible says there is no other name given to men under heaven by which we must be saved. This is the wisest decision you can make on this side of God's kingdom. I salute you, I salute you. I salute every one of you. Thank you. Listen. Listen to me. Someday your children will tell you, Thank you, Daddy, for making it right with Jesus. Thank you, Mommy, for making it right with Jesus. Some of you will become great leaders, and your subordinates will say, Thank you. Thank you for leading us to Jesus. Hear me? And for some of you, perhaps, you may never have the opportunity to say it here. But then when we find ourselves at the shores of eternity, you will look beyond and see me. You will look beyond and see Pastor Nathaniel. And here's what some of you will say. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. Now you're going to be given a card. Can I have a copy of the card so I wave it so they can see someone? Please pass it to me. Thank you. Hallelujah. So this is what it looks like. Please make sure, keep your hands lifted if you've not got one and you'll be given one. Thank you. Please. Okay, beautiful. So you have this. It's also online. Those who are following online, you can, yes, on your screen and you can do the scan and just fill it. Um, 
make sure that all those who are here are given their counselors moving across just be patient and they'll hand you over one now you can be sure that your privacies are protected maximally we're working in keeping with the laws of your land and would not violate your privacy whatsoever so please feel comfortable to to fill your card and do so legibly but um, I'm going to lead you now there, there, there are so many of you you know we prayed for you and we prayed for this and I'm glad you're here <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah now I want to lead you to pray a prayer that everyone who is a believer in truth must have prayed it takes that prayer of faith to make it right with Jesus some of you are making this decision for the very first time and some of you it's a way of rededication in any case you are most welcome may I request that you lift your right hand please lift it high above your head as a sign of surrender and if you are there scattered through the crowd go ahead join them you can lift your hand if you are praying this prayer of salvation I want you to say after me all of you who are here say it as loud as you can and as clear as you can that includes those who are following online say Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. one more time say Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Tonight, tonight I have heard your word I, heard your word. I, believe, I believe that you are the Son of God, son of God. I, believe I believe that you died for me, died for me. I, believe I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus and I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that Jesus is my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan, Satan. Hell, hell and the grave, and the grave. is broken over my life <laughs> from tonight until forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb amen. amen now keep your hands lifted as I pray for you father thank you for these precious ones the Bible declares that no man comes to the father except by the son and it says blessed is everyone that God causes to approach him these ones have come father thank you so much because you are truly the Savior you are the Lord and you are the King and I declare by the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven from this moment I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God and in the name of Jesus based on the authority of Scripture I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ receive the power to live a victorious Christian life for in Jesus mighty name we pray forget about acquisition acquisition is tertiary the primary goal of lifting Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be concentrated. Let your mind be. Holy God's fire! For